Picture this, you walk out of class, had a great lecture, kinda understood it, and then it comes time to study for the midterm and you have no idea what that lecture was even about. You don't know what you know, you don't know what you don't know, and you don't know what grade you're gonna end up getting on this test. If you've ever gone to school, you know how important note taking can be to your success in that course. And today, we're taking you through how I take notes and exploring the options that you have to take great, great notes. So let's go. What's up YouTube, it's Josh Reese, helping you become the best optometrist that you can be. So whether or not you're applying to school or getting through school, go ahead and smash the subscribe button and smash the like button and show some appreciation down in the comments for this ASCOP shirt that I got. It's very generic, but I love it. I actually talked about this a little bit in a video of me unpacking my backpack. If you wanna see that video and kinda of see what I talked about there, it's right here, I think. So if you've ever been on optometry school or medical school or professional school TikTok or memes in general, you'll know that the one of the most relatable things in all of these schools is how fast the professors go. You walk into class and they're on one slide and you sit, you like take notes a little bit and you look back up and they're three slides ahead and they're just going so fast and you can't blink because they're just going so fast and you feel overwhelmed and that is a horrible feeling and we've all <laughs> felt it, especially your first few weeks in optometry school, it is like drowning. You sit in class and you're like, uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'll kind of walk through how I take notes in class and what options I've seen other people apply and how successful they've been. As far as I'm concerned, you really only have three options out there on how to take notes in class. One is to not take notes at all, I don't recommend that. Two is to take notes by hand, which is a little archaic, I know. You're, so you're gonna pull out in the Amish country out here, right? Or three, take notes electronically. Now, number three is the most popular one by far, but it's actually not the one that I use. I use number one. No, just kidding, I take notes. Right? I'm not one of those people who don't take notes at all. Although a lot of professors have pretty good study guides, so some people I do know that don't take notes, they actually are doing okay as well. So you're not lost if you're someone who just likes to pay attention in the moment and use the professor's study guides on the side, but not every professor is great, so I wouldn't bank on that. I use number two, which is paper notes. I know I am horrible, I get made fun of a lot by my classmates, I get made fun of by the professor sometimes, and I get made fun of for just about every single person who finds out that I'm taking paper notes. But there's usually about one or two people per class who takes paper notes. I just happen to be one of them. Because I'm a cheapskate, I'm gonna be honest. So what do my notes actually look like? So I actually pulled some out right here. So it's nice because these professors have been doing it for a while, they're pretty structured, they've got the flow, they know what you need to know and they know how to lay it out. And so when the lecture is very structured, I have a nice, nice time taking notes. So it looks kind of like this, all right? Just kind of see it where you got the title of the lecture and then you kind of go through the summary points and then they kind of are able to list out the different things that you're going to know. So right here you see we um, are covering recessive diseases. Uh, this is as far as genetic section goes. And then we have a list of the gen um, each disease that's recessive and what you need to know about it. You know, putting squares or underlines around the keywords that you need to look for in test questions and what to relate them back to. And then some dominant down here, right? And then the diseases, boxes around the keywords that you'll need to look out for. If the two diseases are similar, you don't need to write down their similarities. If it's gonna be a test question, they're going to be kind of differential diagnosis kind of things. So writing down the key things that are different that set that one apart and professors are always going to test on the key differences. They know you're going to be a doctor and doctors you're gonna look for the most obvious, the key differences. So a lot of these things you're not going to need to know deep detail. That being said, not every professor's like that, you'll get that occasionally. But if you make sure that you get the big picture stuff, you're never gonna fail an exam. If as long as you get these big picture stuff down, you're gonna get all the gimme questions and you're gonna, you know, maybe miss a few along the way, but I'm willing to, to get, um, take those points. All right, where paper notes sucks is that when it's not super structured out and the professor's kind of going, it can really uh, make your life harder. 
So here's an example where they said, okay, so the, here are the five, this is when we're talking about the integument, so the skin, right? Here are the five layers. And so I wrote down each of the five layers. I said, okay, sweet. I wrote down the five layers. Where are we? Right here. And then he's like, okay, now go depth into each of them. And I was like, oh, I don't have room for this. And so I started making my notes smaller and smaller because I didn't know how long he was going to talk for about each of them. Turns out he talked a long time about each of them. So I tried to cram it all into one place, which wasn't the best. And I think I did okay on this section, but studying it was horrible. And so that's kind of how paper notes goes. I thought my paper would last a lot longer, but in just this one class, um, we have 12 lectures a week on this class. And um, I take about a page and a half per lecture. And this is how much paper I've used up already, about half of this one notebook. And so I'm not sure how much this can be kept up through the entirety of optometry school. So I might switch over to technology, I'll keep you posted. But yeah, I'm a simple man, that's how I take notes. I also exclusively get my pens for free, so that's kind of nice. But yeah, so here are my two notebooks that all of optometry school is in for me. Now. Let's get into what the smart people do to take notes. And I actually, looking back, would have done this and probably will do this in the future. But that is electronically, woo! So this is where everyone does and the professors know it and they make it super useful to take notes online. And it can be broken up into two, two things. One thing no one does, one thing everyone does. Uh, the thing that no one does anymore is just typing out notes. That's great for undergrad and that's great for Kind of like the same reason why paper notes is good is because you open one note or whatever you're using and you type a section heading and then you type a few things that are important about it next section heading and and that just gives you kind of like how i study with paper notes is it just gives you the broad overview and when you're studying back in the notes you just remember the important things about it and it doesn't give you the very details if you want to get in the details you log in and download the PowerPoints that they teach from and study those. But here's what most people do and here's the smartest thing to do. Which honestly, this is my recommendation. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching this much. But that is getting an iPad or getting a tablet of any kind and downloading the PowerPoints and taking notes on the PowerPoints. That is the smartest thing to do. It's honestly, I, if I had one, I'd show you, but people download Notability, or I think some people still try to use OneNote. There's some, there's pretty cheap note-taking apps that is honestly cheaper. These notebooks are not that cheap. These notebooks are like five, six dollars a pop. And so honestly, I might burn through enough notebooks where it's gonna be more cost-effective to get a tablet and take notes on that in the long run. And so honestly, if you think I can't afford an iPad or something like that, I'd rethink that because you're gonna be spending money on paper and pencils and notes and hauling them around to class when you could spend one-time costs of an iPad and stuff like that. So, I don't know, think about it. But yeah, you can literally download the PowerPoints that they're teaching from and have it up and take notes right where they like point their laser pointer, like, hey, remember this guy, this guy's super important. You can literally just take out your, your stylus and say, hey, this is important and it still gets you that feeling of writing stuff down. Like all the psychologists say is super important to have and note taking the feeling of actually writing something down. You have that with the tablet. So it's honestly, it's not a downside at all. So that's how taking notes works. As far as paying attention in class, it's always a struggle because if you zone out for like one second, you're behind. But one advice that one of the counselors told us at orientation was look over the slides the day before so that you're not surprised in class. Not studied the day before, like try to know the information before class, although some professors encourage that. I, you're gonna be behind anyway, don't try to do that. But if you look at it beforehand, or at least when you sit down in class, if you make it like a minute early, go through the slides real quick and say, okay, this is what I'm up against. That makes paying attention so much easier. The first two weeks I tried to do that, where I looked over every PowerPoint before class, Honestly, I'm just rolling with the punches now. <laughs> um, I've been doing okay, and you don't have enough time of the day to, to be that prepared for every class, and that's okay. Whatever helps you become an optometrist, whatever helps you get through class, 
works, right? Everybody is gonna do it a little bit differently and that sucks to hear because you want the one surefire way, but there's not one way to do it. Every, everybody's way has worked for them and you kind of have to find what's ready for you. Now, that might take longer and that's okay. Apply some of these tricks, but just make sure at the end of the day, as long as you're paying attention in class and communicating with the professor what you don't understand, they can help you fill in the gaps of what you could understand. And most helpful is studying and studying in a group because you might take notes better in one place, someone else might take notes better in another place, and you kind of can fill in each other's gaps as well. Good luck with optometry school or whatever you're studying. You've got this. Let's join each other on the quest to taking better notes. And go ahead and comment down below, besides my ASCOP shirt, what note-taking strategies have helped you the most. And we'll see you next time.